you had been to four or five major games outside the Caribbean beforehand. Um, and in finals, you're definitely the only black swimmer in many of times you raced at that point. Did you, did, did that play in you at the time? You were 16, 17 and 18 in Atlanta. Did that play in you at all? Were there any funny places you just laughed off? Were there things that hurt you? What, talk about what's that like? You, so those who are listening, you are the first black swimmer to make the Olympic final in a 50 meter freestyle. I mean, since then we've had a few. Um, you know, of Tony and, and Simone and stuff, but you were the first. Uh, you were the third black swimmer to make the finals in the Olympic swimming, I believe. Anthony, and before Anthony, there was a QSL swimmer um, in 1976, 103. But yeah, did, uh, talk about your experience there, Not maybe not in Atlanta even, but even before in Brazil or what have you. Um, I'll just trust your data because I, I don't know that for a fact. Yeah. Me neither. So Anthony Morrison, please correct me. You're listening. You're doing a really good job. So Anthony Morrison, <laughs> can correct me all right now. Um, I, uh, what was your question? <laughs> like, so yeah. when I traveled, so as a minority, um, you know, you, you, you experience these things and it's just kind of like, oh yeah. You know, I'd get, I definitely would get a lot of looks, but I, <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day and I was telling them that I'm what I call a double whammy. I'm a female, mm -hmm. in a white sport. I'm a female and I'm black in a white sport. And so I consider that a double whammy of a, with a coaching that is predominantly male and predominantly white male, white males. And so you know, things have happened to me where I think to myself and I justify it. I think of it, oh, well, Leah, maybe if you had done this, maybe if you had done that, maybe if that had happened. Oh. And But every time I try to self-correct and adjust, it keep, the same thing kept happening. Um, and so it was similar with swimming when I was younger where, you know, you walk on a pool deck and you have people just staring at me. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, maybe they're staring at me because I'm tall. Like, <laughs> maybe in the Caribbean, yeah, but yeah. Um, and so, because in growing up in the Caribbean, you're, you're... It was because you were tall. It was because you were fast. It's because you had just set the Barbadian record. So there's Leah. Let's look at her. That's why but I you. I didn't think of it that way. I didn't think anyone knew who I was. I still don't think anybody really knows who I, I am. So mm. going to these different meets, definitely I had people looking at me. Um but again, I just thought it was because I was tall and they had just never seen me before. Um, there were one time I went to, I tell this story all the time. One time I went to Japan for when world championships was in Fukuoka. Yeah, for, yeah Fukuoka, yeah. And um, every time got in an elevator and a Japanese would walk in, they'll go, oh, <laughs> just look at me up and down and like, I'm like, yes, I am tall and I am black. Yes, I am. Okay. Do you remember the, do you remember the summer Shaun Hayward? So Shaun went to those Fukuoka games for Trinidad. He was a breaststroker. So he and my brother went and they all thought he was Michael Jordan. And so he played along with that and he just signed Michael Jordan autograph left, right, and center for all the Japanese guys. <laughs> my brother has this great story. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jordan. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Dark and bold. He's like, okay, there we go. Sorry. Oh there. Yeah. So I mean, but again, it wasn't anything um nothing traumatizing. Yeah. Going to these meets. Nothing was very traumatizing. I mean, related to other people. I mean, again, there are other situations, but like related to other swimmers and it's just people staring at me and it's just what? part of it. What about as your experience and you, you know, you go to school, school at UF and, um, and find your way through sort of navigating the NCAA system is, uh, and, and furthermore to expand into the coaching ranks, like, have, have, did you feel like you had to overcome, uh, obstacles related to your race and gender, um, you know, through those experiences? Um, from a coaching perspective, yes, a little bit, but one of the, so obviously I came, I didn't start call, I didn't come to the US until to start college. So I didn't come for high school or anything like that. Yeah. I came from the Caribbean to the US. And quite honestly, my father did not want me 
and he did not want me to come to the it was between going to australia and going to florida i really wanted to i figured florida is closer to home so i really wanted to go to florida and but he did not want me to go to florida he did not want me to go to gainesville florida never heard of Gainesville, Florida, first of all. Um, but he was adamant, did not want me to go to Florida. And it was because of the racial reputation of the U.S., the racial reputation of Gainesville. He did not want me to experience that because we had had friends who, now you have to understand, within the Caribbean, everyone's mixed with something. Like Luke, I'm sure, is mixed with something. And um, Yeah, some, I think a little bit of crazy. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's mixed with something. So I had um, some close friends that actually went to, um, who went to Florida, and they had a really hard time. Like in Barbados, they'd be considered a Bajan white, but in the U.S. Who's this, Leah? Considered white, and they wouldn't be considered black. Yeah. So they had, she had a really hard time. A lot of racial situations happened with her. So. These were really close family friends. So my father, mm. like, I do not want to send her to, to Florida. The only thing that got him to send, get, let me go to Florida was that Anthony was there. So Anthony was one of the coaches. It was his first year. And I was like, daddy, Anthony Nesty's going to be there. One of the coaches. No, I feel well. Anthony's with the men's team. My father didn't know that. <laughs> Anthony Nesty's going to be there. I mean, it's going to be great. He's one of the coaches. That was the only thing that convinced him to let me go to Florida. Good man. So we, so, so first of all, that, and I was like, Daddy, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Like, that's so long ago. Like, race is not an issue anymore. And so he agreed to let me go. Well, the culture shock came to me when my somebody, I don't remember who it was, somebody came to me and asked me, so how does it feel to be the only black person on the team? And I was like, I don't know. I, like, that was the first time race was like, like slapped me in the face because in Barbados, that's not really, it wasn't really part of your identity like you didn't grow up thinking i'm black like you, you just i don't know so that was the first time that um i think they asked me that and like and then they were like oh like or african-american i'm like i'm not african-american because i'm not american i'm i'm barbadian so i'm a citizen now but at the time i was an international student so it really opened my eyes i'd even tell my dad that story because god forbid but it really opened my eyes at how much this country relies on race as being an identity. And um, so that was like the first time that I was just like, wow, this place really does look at, like race is clearly a big deal. And so then I kind of just played it off, like, whatever. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm the only black girl on the team. And just so happened I was the fastest. So it really didn't affect me all that much. I was like, whatever. And, um, but fast forward a little bit, you know, eventually our team had got more black people. Like Janelle came with Janelle Atkinson. Who's from Jamaica. Janelle Gibney came on the team. She's from Ireland. And so the three of us would make up a relay and we would always joke around that the one white girl would be the honorary black girl on this relay because we needed four people on the relay. But we would always mix Janelle, me and Chantal up. And I'm like, I'm 10 feet taller than Janelle. Like what, how could you even mix us up? So like stuff like those subtle things would happen to us all the time, all the time. Um, but, but it's, it's interesting, it's just, it was very interesting for me coming from the Caribbean and then coming here and realizing, wow, like you people really pay close attention to race. Like even like one of, one of my teammates was like, oh yeah, I was trying to describe someone to you and I was having a hard time explaining who you were. And I was like, why didn't you just say the only black person on the team? 
And she's like, oh, no, I couldn't say that. And I was like, okay, this is really confusing. Like, why can you not say that? And so it was just, just those very subtle things that would happen. 